I work on PowerPoint. I graduated from my master's and it was like really difficult for me to find a job. My job title is mostly talking to the CXOs of the company. I've been running uh, startups. I think the most fun interview there, they actually told me to... Hey, what's up? Today we're at Microsoft headquarters asking software engineers how to get into Microsoft and if they have any other advice to share. And you'll want to watch to the end because we found someone who has not only talked to the CTO of Microsoft, but every major CIO and CTO in the entire industry. What's your name? I'm Sid. Nice to meet Sid, you. Sid, nice to meet you. Yeah. How long have you been at Microsoft and what is your job title? I've been at Microsoft for about two years and most of my experience has been uh, as a software engineer here at Microsoft. Yo, what's up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's your name? Uh, I'm Alex. Okay. I just had my second anniversary. Okay, um, congrats. So my job title is software engineer too. What team are you on currently? What types of stuff do you build? And what is your day-to-day -day technology tech stack? So I work in the cloud and AI, uh, AI team. A lot of my tech stack is definitely uh, based around C Sharp. And most of my day-to-day -day is actually going towards sort of quality initiatives, mm. making sure all our testing is in place, making sure our code is robust and reliable, and making sure you know Azure is one of the most reliable clouds in Microsoft. I work on PowerPoint. Oh. Uh, my day-to-day -day is pretty much either it's C++, which is the native side with the desktop app, and then there's some JavaScript, TypeScript, and uh, C Sharp scattered around. How did you get into tech? Like, walk me through what the interviews look like, what you do in college, maybe. Did sort of the classic lead code grind, prep for software engineering internships. Was able to get an internship at Microsoft a few summers ago, and then just converted to full time uh, as a software engineer afterwards. Uh, there were four interviews, uh, one after the other, and they ended up with my manager. Questions one of them was like standard, like lead code kind of thing. One of them was like, they sh literally showed me a C page, like a file from C. C file and then we're like what are the bugs here oh wow that's cool <laughs> and they didn't say anything i had to say everything did you get them yeah i think i got it hey let's go nice <laughs> and the, i think the most fun interview there they actually told me to create a sudoku solver sudoku solver yeah oh that's cool that was probably my fa most favorite interview a question i've ever had nice what has been your favorite software engineering or tech memory so far been hanging out with friends taking trips to different areas taking trips to seattle i think when it comes to like the actual coding i don't think i have any specific memory that stands out but but definitely something I really appreciate is just um, all the kind of mentorship sessions I've had with more senior engineers on my team in terms of teaching me the different areas of our tech stack. And definitely something I, I really appreciate about Microsoft, just having that inclusive, really collaborative community of, of growth mindset and trying to teach people how to best learn. We got a five day hackathon and we pretty much like set up a whole feature from scratch in that five days. If you have any pieces of advice, what would you tell people? I think I have a few pieces of advice here. So one would be definitely like reach out to people in your network about their experiences interviewing at different companies, what they were asked, and what questions that they would ask if they were to interview another candidate, just to get that sort of insider information. Uh, definitely study Lee code a lot or any sort of interview prep website. I think a lot of them are really good. Don't sweat it, you'll get through. <laughs> Uh, interviews, just take it casually, just talk with them. It's a conversation, so don't stress it. Do you see yourself being at Microsoft for a long time? Yes, I think I do actually. I think there's a lot of different teams within Microsoft that work on many different products. So even if I decide I want a sort of change in my career, want to work on something else outside of cloud, mm -hmm. um, I have that opportunity. And I think for me, it's, it sounds really cheesy, but Microsoft is more than just a place I work because I come here every day. My social life is here. It's where I eat food. It's where I work out. Just got back from a workout. That's why I'm a little bit out of breath. Um, so yeah, it's like kind of home for me. So I definitely see myself here long term. Now, the Microsoft engineer who's met the CTO and other industry leaders is right after this. So don't go anywhere. But before that, I want to introduce you to an equally smart editing software, Wondershare's Filmora 13. And rather than show you some generic footage, I thought why not just re-edit this video's intro so we can check out all the features. First, we download the clip and are very easily able to see everything in our timeline. We can then split it up to get the sequence we want and rearrange everything to our heart's content. Now we need music, but I'm really lazy, so we're going to generate the entire sequence through AI. And that's what you're hearing right here. I also want some movement in the shot, so I'm going to use the text to video feature to get some new B-roll. And last but not least, we need a thumbnail, but I'm not sure how to do that. So no worries, I'm going to ask the AI co-pilot. It's pretty easy. You hit edit, pick a template you like, and then it's done. In general, the editor is super sleek, easy to use, and packed with features. And with the affordable price plan, I'd highly encourage you to go check out Wondershare's new Filmora 13 using my special link in the description. Now, let's hear from the Microsoft legend himself. What's your name? 
I'm Rashid Moy. Okay, nice to meet you. First of all, tell me how long have you been at Microsoft and what is your job title? I've been here four years and my job title is uh, an architect, Azure OpenAI architect. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then what is your day-to-day -day look like today? I got to talk to the CTOs, CIOs of the Fortune 500 companies. I helped them adopt like how to implement AI, Azure OpenAI, and uh, that's my main role. I just uh, I helped them move and adopt the right architect design patterns and my job title is mostly talking to the CXOs of the companies. Oh, that's super cool. Who's the coolest person you've talked to? I will say a CTO of my own company. Oh, really? Of Microsoft? Yeah. yeah Wait, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, so he, he came here uh, a few months back uh, for some of the town hall and I got a chance to talk to them. He's one of the most uh, uh, like uh, awesome personality and how he became the CTO, that's a story to know. And then what is one piece of advice you'd give to people trying to break into tech or get into Microsoft? There's not one way to break into tech. It means tech, tech is itself a big space, right? You don't have just have to be a programmer mm -hmm. to become in the tech. You, there's many different roles. Uh, you just need to write mindset, growth mindset. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think that what you know now or what is your current skill is what you have. You can always grow into what you want to do, right? So I think there's no one way and I definitely don't think that all programmers or coders or I think a lot of people get intimated, especially the young folks that they have to sit inside the cubicle and do all the day desk job. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a part of the job. You have tons of other responsibility here, talking to the customer, talking to other developers. And it means it's a whole, it's like any other job. It's not like... Uh, just uh, the tech job, if you're thinking. And what has been your favorite memory in this role or a previous role so far? My favorite memory is in the previous role, like before Microsoft, I've been running uh, startups. I ran two startups as a, a CTO and founder. Okay. And uh, I think that's my, like the best memories of entire my career. Do you see yourself doing architecture, especially at Microsoft for a long time, or are you interested in other things? I have an entrepreneurial uh, bug, so I'm thinking to do another startup. Oh, okay, maybe your own? Yeah, it, uh, earlier I had my own startups too. Oh. So I was the founder of the startup that got acquired. Hey, what's your name? Hi, my name is David. David, mm -hmm. nice to meet you. Nice so for you. starters, how long have you been at Microsoft and what is your job title? I've been here at four years. Uh, my title is hardware engineer. Hi, I'm Mayuri. I am a network automation engineer and I've been working since like 2.5 years now. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Amy. Amy? Yeah. I have been at Microsoft only recently because mm -hmm. I have come from an acquisition. Oh, okay. So, but I've, I've been with that company for 23 years. Wow. And my title is Principal uh, Technical Program Manager. So you're building something. Mm -hmm. What do you do to build it? Like, what is your role? Run a bunch of simulation so that it makes sure it's hard, building hardware is very expensive. Mm. That we want to make sure it works every time. I don't know all that much, but you know the point. It's got to work. So I work in the Azure WAN network. So I specifically work on a system called as Express Route. Okay. So where we like provide uh, fast and reliable internet service to the uh, like to the users. And like mostly my day-to-day -day activities is like uh, I mostly work on automation. How did you get into hardware engineering? What did what did the interviews look like? What do you study? What was the process? Get into the electrical electrical engineering major for okay. sure. You just gotta be uh, enthusiastic about it. Yeah, you gotta be passionate. That's okay, all, that's all you need. Yeah, so it was like one coding interview and three uh, different interviews based on all the networking knowledge, building relationships. Okay risk management. Mm. When you have a lot of interdependent things going on, how do you facilitate meetings and how do you get people um, to stay accountable and motivated to deliver? Yeah, okay. I'm usually just trying to see kind of what their experience has been like and can they captivate an audience, if mm. you will, and right. hold the attention of a room and get their points across so they have to be a very good communicator. What has been your favorite like memory so far working on hardware stuff? I was only worked on like um, test chips, which is not real product. Or I was close to enough to make it you know, to the pro product, yeah. But then it got canceled. So I had no, no, I had nothing for eight years. Yeah. Then recently, I something got something that is getting productized. Sure. So I'm really excited for that. Wait, that's awesome. So that took me ten years to get the first one. That's actually about to be, you know, out there. So. Yeah. So I really like the events that uh, that are held over here. So like we had this uh, friends and family event. Mm. That was really nice. That was a good memory. Yeah. So this is the time that I'm bonding with my teammates. Before that, I was working from home. So it was like, <laughs> no, I don't have memory from that. Time. Releasing products is always a great memory. I would just say mentoring younger women. Yeah. I'd say growing up uh, in, in the industry and 
uh, getting people really excited about technology. Do you have any advice for anyone trying to get into hardware engineering? Especially because you said you felt like an imposter for a long time. You you will feel that all the time. There's always genius. I mean, it's going to be the same for all the industry, but for some reason, it feels like every time I talk to my colleagues, they feel the same way towards each other. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's irony, but that's how it is. Yeah. And you're not like so, alone. Don't give up. If you like it, just keep trying. Yeah. And you'll be good at something that's going to be useful. I graduated from my master's and it was like really difficult for me to find a job so I would just say uh, to the people like those who are searching a job like hang on there to prepare your best and give like give interviews and someday or the other you will land your best job and you will love it. Follow whatever works really well for you. I think the big thing is when there's problems there's usually like there are people who are assigned to tasks and then there's the stuff that falls in between the tasks yeah. like the balls that might be dropping. Yeah. Those are the problems that nobody else is solving and if you can just go grab some of those balls and like make it your own that will be a good stepping stone into figuring out what you want to do next people love people who solve problems and take ownership of things so that's what i would go for